that's how you log into your Google SketchUp. So you're going to go over to your browser. I'm using Chrome. Uh, once you're in Chrome, you need to make sure that you are logged into your um, Google account. Um, if you're not logged into your Google account, you can go to your Google Drive or just go to any of your Google apps like Mail, etc. Um, and then you should see over in the right hand corner that you are uh, logged in. Okay, once you log in, you're going to go to the Google app waffle here. And you are going to scroll down to the bottom. And you should see Google SketchUp for schools. Um, if you don't, you can click on more from G Suite. <coughs> and search for it but you should see you should see SketchUp for schools you're going to click on SketchUp for schools and it will take a second for it to transition um, you will not see any drawings in the area here uh, if you've never been into Google SketchUp for schools before but um, what I do want you to do before you even begin is just make sure that you've selected your Google Drive and that you have created a folder already called, I called mine SketchUp. Um, if you haven't created a folder called SketchUp already, um, you will need to go to your Google Drive, create a new folder and I'm going to call this one test because I already have one. Um, and then when you flip back to your Google SketchUp for schools, you want to make sure that you search for that folder and um, you select that folder. Okay. In our case, you would be using, I, I, I would suggest using the word SketchUp just so it's easy for you to find. So in my SketchUp folder, let me get rid of this search. <clears throat> In my SketchUp folder, I have a few files that I've created already. Okay. All right. So once you have selected that drive, you, you'll be here on the screen. Um, you will be going up to the top to save and put the file in a particular folder when you're ready to do so up here. Um, on the left hand side are your tools for creating new objects and editing those objects. On the right hand side are a series of other tools which we'll be using later, some of these maybe, but for the most part you won't be using any of this. This is more advanced stuff for the purpose of just getting to know uh, what we're doing. Um, we probably are not going to be using this too much. Okay. All right, so we've got a person here um, in our in a world. Um, as I move my mouse around, you can hopefully see the arrow moving. Um, there are three axes. So there's a red axis, which represents our X axis, or our horizontal left-right axis. Our Y axis is green. Green represents going vertically uh, forwards and backwards in space. And then the blue axis represents our z-axis, which represents our third dimension, or going uh, vertically up and down. Okay. Um, when we're creating um, our drawings, uh, for the purpose of woodworking, especially this first one, the small one, um, it's going to be very small relative to the person who's, who's actually in our drawing. Um, so you may find that this is a little bit distracting. If you want to delete them, you can select that person and then just hit the delete key. I'm going to leave it in there for now because it helps with uh, showing you some of the tools that we're going to use to view our model. So um, first off, <clears throat> we can use the orbit tool. Um, if you click any of these tools that have a little arrow, they will pop out a little flyout menu, but we're going to just use the orbit tool. 
and basically you'll see my cursor now changed to a red and green arrow that spins around an axis and if I click in the view area with my left mouse button and then I rotate towards the right you can see that I'm spinning if you look at the axes don't look at the person the person always faces you but if you look at the red green and blue lines you'll see that they're spinning and I can rotate left to right or I can rotate up or down um, when you go below the floor it makes it transparent so you can see up through it or you can do a combination of of both okay so that's one tool um, another tool which is also accessible from the main um, button here is the search tool or the zoom tool sorry not the search tool search tools up there <laughs> the zoom tool when I click the zoom tool my my icon changes into a uh, hourglass or a magnifying glass I should say and then I'll be able to zoom in or out if I want to zoom in on the model okay now this just basically takes your current view and zooms it in and out okay moving side to side you notice doesn't do anything while I'm pressing the button you're basically just zooming in and out by scrolling your mouse forward or backwards okay I prefer actually rather than doing that I leave my mouse on orbit and I will use the position of the mouth let's say I want to look at her tie I will highlight her and I will zoom in with the wheel I'm using the wheel on my mouse and I'm scrolling back if I want to look at her shoes I will put the mouse down by her shoes and then scroll in with my mouse okay now if I want to start to draw something now that we've learned how to maneuver around our drawing a little bit um, I'm going to use the pencil tool from the first uh, toolbar and make sure it's set to line <clears throat> um, the other is for off doing freehand kind of sketching stuff which we're not going to do so we're going to use the line tool um, my pencil now will or my cursor now will look like a pencil and I'm going to click where I want to start my pencil line and I will draw a line I can draw it in any direction I want notice though that as I pull it in the direction of the x-axis or the red axis it turns red if I pull it up towards the green axis it turns green and if I pull straight upwards it turns blue and this is how we can draw in the X in the Y and in the Z axis okay now for what we're going to do we want to keep onto the floor or onto our tabletop I guess you could think of that if this is a piece of paper and I want to pull the mouse in this direction uh, to draw a line now right down here in the bottom right hand corner you can see a measurement and this one is in feet and inches this is uh, currently saying five foot three and one eighth of an inch so you notice as I pull the mouse forwards and back that length changes so I could define a certain length that I want for that line now I wouldn't try to line it up like if I'm trying to get two feet you can notice that it's very difficult very difficult it jumps back and forth so rather than do that what I do is I pull the mouse all the way over to around two feet and then I just move to the keyboard so I've I know you can't see me do this but I've taken my hand off of the keyboard and I just go over to the or off of the mouse and I've gone gone over to the keyboard and I'm gonna type in two and the foot symbol which is a single quote and if I wanted this to be two foot six I would type a six and then an inch symbol or I can type space and let's say it's a half of an inch okay so I would type in two the foot symbol six a space one divided by two and then the inch symbol that's going to end up drawing a line that's two foot six and one half inch long and then I hit enter on the keyboard okay now um, I could continue to draw more lines but let's just double check that that line is the size that I said so if we go over to the tape measure tool now and we click on it you can see I have a tape measure in my hand and I can click on one end 
there's a little green node that appears and then if I click on the other end it will tell me the length two foot six and one half inches okay all right so let's make a rectangle so I'm gonna draw uh, another line um, if you have already drawn lines and you want to reference an existing line you're just gonna click on that line and now I want to go up say seven inches in the green axis okay so now it's green so I'm gonna go seven inches again I just move my mouse my hand from my mouse to the keyboard I type in seven inches and hit enter and then I want to go back this direction the same length we did before two foot six space and then one over two inches and then to close up the line to make a rectangle I'm going to click right there and you'll notice that it turned into a solid gray color and if I use my mouse wheel I'm pressing my mouse wheel now I can orbit as well by doing that you can see I've created this two foot six by uh, seven inch rectangle okay now let's say this has a thickness to it let's say we want to make it one inch thick um, what we could do we could continue to draw a line and I could draw a line upwards by one inch okay and then draw all the way around but that would be kind of complicated so I'm gonna undo that um, you can type control Z to undo um, and I'm going to show you another tool that will allow me to take this thing that's on the floor and pull it upwards by one inch that's called the push pull tool if I click push pull so I'm gonna click and pull up and like before we want to put in a specific distance so I move my mouse hand off my mouse I type one and then the inch symbol and then hit enter and now that's one inch tall so if we use our tape measure tool again we can click on that corner and we can click on the top part that's one inch and it's two foot six and a half and if I orbit around it is seven inches okay from that corner all right and that's some basics on how to draw some things